is the experience that I'm asking for and what do I believe will bring it to me in form. And that was something I had to do in the early years of my working through things because I would ask the question, what is it for? Why, why am I in university? Why am I taking all these classes? What am I putting all this work and energy into? Uh, I had to start to work it in to what I believed I needed in order to get the experience that I wanted and kind of sort through that because I, you know, I think there's, that's where a lot of, you could seem to in this world spend years doing things to achieve certain goals and then with the economic turns and earth changes and all that's happening, suddenly what you've worked 30 or 40 years on could be kind of like a, like a, a mandala, like the Buddhists, you know, where the broom comes in and, and just sweeps it away. And you think, hmm, that really gets you to start to reevaluate what you believe you're after and what you believe will bring it to you. And so, we do, Glenn was bringing up the thing, ask and you shall be given, you know, that's, that's a common thing that Jesus said in the Bible. And, and on another level we feel like prayers are answered, but um, it really comes down to that central question is, what am I asking for? You know, that's the way you get more towards the core of the mind. What is it truly that I want? What is it truly that I'm asking for? Past all these layers of thoughts and beliefs, where I can seem to get distracted into, oh, I want this thing, okay, I got it but I still have another one, or there's something behind it, you know, behind door number one, door number two, door number three, going deeper, deeper inside. So... I guess, David, a very basic kind of example mm -hmm. level, what occurs to me is uh, when you hear people talking about, uh, oh, I wish I could win the lottery, see? It was not really the money that would count in their last job, it's the experience of abundance that they're, they're really desiring, I think. You know, it's not it's not the money as such, or even the notion of me, but it's just that I would like that experience of abundance so that I don't have an experience of lack, perhaps. You know? yeah. And that's good. That whole abundance lack thing is, is interesting too because, you know, people have so many different experiences around money and things. Yeah. You know, some seem to be very, very content and happy with what seems to be little, especially in some of these third world countries uh, where you go down and they take all these photographs of these children that are standing there with barely anything on his clothes and living in a little thatched roof thing, if they have anything over their, their head and they got these big beaming smiles and then you look at Wall Street and, yeah. and some of the things where major cities where people are carrying their briefcases and their power suits and their, their lips are very tight and their faces are very tense and it's like, wait a minute, they're the ones that, that seem to have so much material abundance and why are they so stressful? Why do their faces look so tense? Why are they always looking straight ahead and not uh, making eye contact with people and doing the things that the little children can do that seems to have extreme poverty conditions? And I think, and again this comes down to the experience of the experience of love, like the Beatles said, all you need is love. The more that you experience that sense of, of love, there's just this sense of such ease and contentment and fulfillment that it's almost like the very things that you might have been asking for the moment before or five minutes ago are like, are gone from awareness. Like, you forgot what to ask. Uh, you <laughs> forgot what the question was. Uh, you're just so filled up that it's like, wow, uh, oh yeah, what was that that I was uh, pondering or asking for? And uh, it's a little bit, Les was sharing um, that last year at Noosa, you know, he, that was something that we talked through quite a bit, the, the desire to, to fly the jumbo jets, and it was like one of those last remaining goals in form that was really hanging there and wouldn't go away. And then recently he was saying that he had an experience uh, being with Helen and I being at your house and then also going down to, to Tilba, down to Sue's place, where there was such a sense of glee and joy and he kind of got swept away in the, in the love so much that, that all of a sudden the, the jumbo jet uh, goal just 
seemed to vanish, uh, like a cloud that evaporated. And it had been kind of a persistent thing for several years, like a prominent thing, and all of a sudden it was gone. And I think that's really what we're talking about in terms of an answer to, the, to these kind of questions, is we, we want that experience. You know, we're really calling on that experience of that divine love, and then the questions start to disappear. Uh, Jesus made these rules for decision, where he basically, I mean, it's really great when you get rules for decision of how to live your daily life from Jesus Christ, uh, you know. And he, he gives seven rules for decision, which is like, oh, that number seven comes up again. Seven rules, but he says, really the first two are the most important. Kind of like, uh, here's the Ten Commandments, but the first two are the most important. And it's, the first one is, um, you know, decide the kind of data you want. Uh, that's pretty uh, direct and, and straightforward. Decide the kind of day you want. What do you want to feel? What do you want to experience? Decide the kind of day you want. And then number two is, say, if I make no decisions by myself, that little I, if I make no decisions by myself, this is the day that will be given me. Well, if you were talking about a formula for having a happy day, those are his main two. Decide the kind of day you want, and then say to yourself, if I make no decisions by myself, this is the day that will be given me. That's why I, I've talked about recently being open to be 100% intuitive and 0% analytical. Uh, wow, that's, that's because if you are 100% intuitive, you could just be given by your higher self, by the Holy Spirit, your entire day. Uh, whatever would be most helpful would be given intuitively, uh, and you don't need to figure out anything. Imagine going into a restaurant and the waitress comes and plops down one of these big, thick menus. It's a half an inch thick or half a centimeter, and you look at it and just going ah, or I don't even need it. <laughs> I already know what I want. You know, we all know the feeling of how fun that is to go in there and just boom, boom, boom. I'll have this, 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 and then you can just eye gaze the rest of the time uh, with the with the waiters and the waitresses and the chefs or whoever. You don't even have to sit there and uh, go through and all this and that and try to figure it out. That's where this is leading. It's leading to a state of becoming so intuitive that that everything flows. And one of uh, Jesus's other uh, uh, steps in his rules for decision is uh, basically, I have no question, I forgot what to decide. <laughs> uh, what? That's, that's, a, that's a step, you know. He's like, well, you've already slipped off. If you slip off the first two, it's not going to be easy to get back, he says, to the top two, because those, that's the easy track. You're on, it's like an oil slick uh, down there. The oil spilled out of the tanker, it's already there, and you're just trying the best you can to to get back onto some firm footing, and so five through seven are are little mini steps. Uh, but that one of those things is, you know, you know, I I forgot what to decide. I had no question. You know, it's it's this idea. He says, when you have asked a question by yourself, that's when you're really taking a detour. Ask a question by yourself means the ego is involved. And of course there's going to be a detour from the simplicity of salvation once you go on that detour. So basically that question, what is that question that you ask by yourself? And it is this, of these illusions, which do I prefer? Uh, it is a, and it's got a lot of potential answers uh, from an ego perspective. You can see how, you know, it gets very frustrating when just like with a menu, suddenly you have a menu of choices and it's a vast menu and now you've got to narrow it down and whittle it down. So what we're working with when we talk about mind training is, is getting deeper and deeper inward to your sense of purpose 